Hi, I'm Michael Branwine. I'm the head of the corporate department here at Gordon Law. What is a letter of intent? Ah, I know. It is usually the first document in an M&A transaction. A letter of intent is when two or more parties come together and they think to themselves, I want to buy something, I want to sell something, and maybe we want to merge together. And so we're going to break this down and put pen to paper. And we're going to hammer home an initial agreement, hence letter of intent. We intend to have some sort of deal. Think of a letter of intent as a contract. Within this agreement, you're probably going to have some binding and some non-binding clauses. It's all up for negotiation, but you could have the letter of intent be all non-binding. You could have all of it be binding, or you can pick and choose what the parties agree to with respect to what is binding or what's not binding. So it's really up to the parties to decide what of this agreement is really going to be binding, even if the ultimate deal doesn't go through. In the letter of intent, what are the big things? Well, you got to state the parties. You have to state what's being sold, bought, or if companies are merging, who's merging where. Um, the price is very important. The timeline of the deal. Any other special considerations like confidentiality. So think of a letter of intent as the very, very starting point of a deal between a couple of parties. Regardless of what that deal is, it's very, very important to map out the rest of the transaction because it is essentially a guide or a path to how this deal is actually gonna go down. Who's getting what, who's paying what, who owns what at the end of the day. It's very, very important to have this document drafted, negotiated, reviewed by attorneys, really make sure that this map is essentially what you want, regardless of which side of the deal that you're on. Well, due diligence is usually the process where the purchaser will go ahead and review the company or the asset that they're buying. Perhaps in a M&A deal where companies are merging, whoever's putting up a lot of the money, whoever's gonna be the surviving entity or the one kind of controlling the deal going forward, they're the ones who wanna do the due diligence because at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that what you're getting is what you think you're getting and what you're paying for is what you think you really should be paying for. No surprises, that's the point of due diligence. Yeah, uh, you never know what you're gonna find in due diligence. So it's usually recommended by attorneys to have a due diligence provision in the letter of intent and to also make it so that if something happens in due diligence that you don't like, you can get out of the deal. Um, it could be as simple as, I'm just canceling the deal, I don't like X, Y, and Z. Um, you may get pushback on that and perhaps it has to be a material change in whatever you saw in the due diligence process. That's all subject to negotiation. So can the purchase price change? Uh, the answer is maybe. If it's a non-binding provision in the agreement, sure, the purchase price might be based upon what you find in due diligence. Perhaps you're gonna be looking at a company's uh, books, balance statement, um, accounts receivables, things like that. If it is set as a binding provision in the letter of intent, then you will be bound by it unless usually there's a material change. Uh, but those types of things usually are put into the letter of intent. So generally speaking, at a fundamental level, if the price is binding, that's what the agreed price is. If it's not binding, or if there's a way to sort of monkey around with the terms, that needs to be stated in the letter of intent, either by having the price not being binding, or it's binding, but there's a way to change it after the due diligence process begins. I would say that a lot of people don't really understand how vital the letter of intent is. This is essentially your framework, your map, your guide to the entire deal, regardless of the type of deal. It's something that you need an attorney to assist you with. They need to review, they need to revise, they need to negotiate as well to put you in the best position so that you can then feel comfortable going on to the due diligence phase. During that phase, attorneys can help you review documents that you're giving to the other side, that you're getting from the other side, help you process all the information so that you can then move on to the definitive agreements and ultimately close. I'm Michael Brandwine, the head of the corporate department. Please like and subscribe. Visit our website, gordonlawltd.com. 
The Gordon Law Group is here to help you at any stage of your M&A transaction from letter of intent to due diligence all the way to closing. 